All right. A very good afternoon to you all. It's good to see a full house, despite it being so late in the afternoon. Uh, you know, I'm going to begin this differently. I'd like to have a show of hands from you all. How many of you are from the OTT ecosystem? Just one, two, three, a very small number. Uh, how many of you are content producers? It's a larger number. Are you a producer or distributor? Both. Fantastic. How many content distributors? Uh, how many of you are from the television ecosystem? Where are the rest of you from? Are you just... <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> Sorry? How many in digital production? <laughs> all right. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd actually also like to ask you all, what would you all like to hear from this panel? Can we have a you know, set of mics going around so that we can have the discourse going in that direction? You know, we can continue having sessions where we talk a view from the top. Does anyone, who anyone want to volunteer and tell us what would you like to hear from these fine people on, this, on stage? Do we have a mic here at the back? Yeah. And, and no rude questions, please. Identify yourself. Check, check. Hello, it's Byron from Coconuts Media, and we're an original content producer. So what I want to know is how do you guys pay for content? What are the payment models? And how much do you buy content for? I know okay. that's a difficult question, but thank you. That's from the uh, from the from one of the one of the platforms here. That's for the you'd OTTs. like to find out Yep, OTT okay. payment models for content. Okay, that's one question. So one of you will take this question later as we get on get on into the introductions. And uh, any other questions from you all in the audience? All right, it worked as far as it did. Now let's get on with the. So research about, in, you know, about Asian uh, SWOT and pay TV consumption shows that uh, consumers have yet to shift to consuming video on the go. They are still watching television for a large part in Asia. And if they are going online, they are watching YouTube. Though, of course, internet penetration is about 45% in Asia. Uh, online video content is watched on any device uh, at about 80% in Japan, India, China. There are about 494 million OTT subscribers. These are numbers I've picked up from the internet. Do a Google search, you'll get similar numbers. Uh, you know, the SWOT market is at 177 million, expected to touch 316 million by 2021. Uh, you know, this despite, OTT services are exploding in Asia. More than 100 OTT SWOT services have popped up and AWOT services have popped up in the pa past five years across Asia. Viewing on mobile devices and smart TVs is exponentially increasing. Albeit it's coming on a very small subscriber base. Asia's mobile first and internet guzzling population, dropping data costs, and rising incomes are what are incentivizing the newbies to invest for the future. You know, OTT is at a stage where cable and satellite television was in the 90s in Asia and early 90s. But even so, global biggies such as Netflix have not, much, not made much headway in Asia, thanks to its high pricing and not enough local content. People say it's a sleeping giant. You know, you can't ignore it. And, an, you know, and another major player is slated to launch very soon, Amazon Prime, and it's going to be at very competitive pricing. Predictions are that AWOT is likely what is going to drive this segment. In such a scenario, can the online advertising market ramp up revenues for the AWOT players? Are the media agencies and brands putting in enough money behind such services? Or are the services going to bleed for a few years, just like pay TV did in the early years in Asia? Where does this leave the OTT se sector? Do they have to recalibrate their business plans? Has the business model evolved for the entire OTT and VOD sector? Or will other business models come in place? Is it going to be a free ad-supported service which requires consumer buy-in? Or is it going to be a high ARPU, low-volume subscription model like Netflix? Or is it a telco bundle service? Or a TV bundle ser service? Or is it a lower subscription value model? Or are we still grappling with the model? If that is the case, then what is the role of content in the OTT offering? Is it an, as an aggregator, putting together you know, catch-up TV uh, or catch-up TV? Or is it curating catalog content? Or is it creating original content? Is same date, same date important? All of these are being attempted by this fabulous panel out here in some form or the other. Uh, let us get into a conversation with them to find out whether VOD and OTT is a pipe dream or is it real? How are they programming their OTT services? Who's consuming their OTT service and their SWAT service? What are the watch times? 
what pri pricing models are working with them, what kind of content are they looking for, what kind of pricing are they willing to pay for the content, are they open to Asian productions, or are they going to stay local? For content creators, what markets and platforms are they looking to syndicate their content in? Are they looking to launch their own platforms? You know, for instance, Awesomeness TV. Could it, could it be launching its own platform in Asia? Are they looking for partnerships? Is bundling the, uh, bundling the service to be way to go with electronics or with mobile handsets or with other telcos? It's over to them. The panelists, let's introduce them. There's uh, not in any order of importance, but it's Krishna Rajgopalan, the CCO of Hook. That's the gentleman over there. Would you like to say something, or we just introduce and we get into the conversation? Start with the introductions, I guess. Thanks, uh, everyone, for being here. I'm, I'm uh, very excited to be here. Uh, I'm with Hook. Hook's a quick uh, introduction to Hook. It's, uh, it's a joint venture between Warner Brothers, Sony Pictures, and the Singtel Group, which is the second largest telco group in the world. Uh, we are an SWOT business uh, focusing on scripted entertainment. Uh, we are live in five markets, uh, Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, India, and now Singapore. And uh, we are here to sort of uh, essentially push the uh, and advocate for, I guess, uh, premium paid-for subscription businesses. Great. Then we have Kaz or Kazufumi Nagasawa, the CC of Hulu Japan. Yeah. Yes, just call me Kaz, please. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming today, and uh, I'm very excited to be here. And just uh, let me briefly introduce uh, what we're doing in Japan. Hulu Japan is not owned by Hulu in U.S. anymore. Uh, established as the subsidiary, 100% subsidiary of Hulu U.S. five years ago, five and a half years ago, and got acquired by Nippon TV, which is the terrestri leading terrestrial network in Japan. And so we are now 100% owned by Nippon TV, and we do pure subscript uh, SVOD. We don't do ad body in Japan. And we right now have 1.5 million paying subscribers, and and uh, we've been here in the, mar in the market for five years now. Fantastic. Thanks. Then we have Rebecca. Can, I, can you help me with the pronunciation of your surname? Glashow. Glashow. She's the head worldwide distribution of Awesomeness TV. Over to you, Rebecca. Yes, thank you. Um, Awesomeness TV, it's a multi-platform entertainment brand based out of Los Angeles, California. We focus on the youth audience. So we target 12 to 24-year-olds. We do that by producing content for online, uh, what we call social video, short form content. We produce TV shows as well as feature films. Our first feature film that will be released theatrically is called Before I Fall, we'll, produce, we'll be premiering at Sundance. Um, and on the TV side, we work almost exclusively with OTT partners in the US. So we have multiple production relationships with the likes of Hulu, YouTube Red, as well as Netflix, where we produce uh, traditional format TV series for the teen audience, most recently a show called Freakish, which premiered on Hulu. And we have a strategic relationship with the largest wireless uh, platform in the US, Verizon Wireless, where we produce over 100 hours of original content for their OTT platform, which is called Go90, again for this teen audience, both comedy, drama, et cetera. Um, I brought a clip for our most recent show. It is a TV conference, so let's watch some TV. It's called Tagged. It premiered on Go90 on Verizon and will also be on ITV in the UK in January. Um, if you could play the so video. So can we roll the tape, please? It's called Guidance. So you're the guidance counselor? And college advisor. I'm very good at helping my kids get accepted into college. But not so much the therapy part. Any chance you saw the shooting? Oh my god, there's so much blood. I thought I was prepared. I need to know exactly what happened on that stage. I want the truth, all of it. We were building a life together. I'm not gonna let you tear us apart. Just because you've known me forever doesn't mean you know everything about me. People change. I've wanted to kiss you since the first time I saw you walk through those doors. I saw you and Mr. Ridley last week. I am not gonna let that teach ruin my GPA. Scandal isn't journalism. Sometimes it's just bullying. This is more than a phone. It's a weapon. If people are keeping secrets for each other, you better believe the truth is gonna come out. When it does, your friends won't be your friends anymore. This isn't drama. 
These are young people grappling with the biggest loves and losses of their lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, our final panelist is uh, Mr. Hao Fang. He's the chief executive producer of LETV in China. Over to you, Mr. Hao Fang. Uh, first of all, sorry for my poor English, so I ask Sean to be my translator. Uh, LE tv.com 或者是LE.com 是在中国领先的一家视频网站 LETV.com is a leading online TV platform in China 你可以把它理解成YouTube呃,Hulu加Netflix的一种 They are very similar, the uh, platform is very similar to YouTube, uh, Hulu 但是它跟其他的视频网站,不管是 这个全球的或者中国的视频网站最大的区别是，它同时也是一家硬件生产商。So the key difference uh, between uh, Le TV and the rest of the platform, not only in China but around the world, is. Uh, Um, the sales volume of the mobile has up to about eight million dollars for TV, mobile TV. Of the brand of TV have a sales volume of uh, up to about eight million dollars. Million dollars, or is it eight million units? Units. Units, not eight million units. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the phone we sold out to about um, eight hundred thousand. And the handphone they sold out to about one point seven million units. Yeah. Uh, so in the future, in the future, 视频网站的这种竞争中间，我们可能具有了一些这个新的这种竞争优势。So in the future of this uh, online uh, TV platform, they have a sort of advantage. Great. So you know, I'll get into the discussion. He's basically, you know, when I, if I look at what LETV has been doing, they're bundling the price of the VOD service along with the device that they're selling. People don't pay separately, the consumers don't pay separately. So is that the way to go? A free service which is being packaged with a device? From销售策略上,我们是采取这样的方式,就至少在以前的销售中间,我们都是用硬件免费。然后呢，绑定这个会员的这个在内这个收取内容的会员费，用这种方式在销售。So um, they actually package uh, together this uh, package of VOD together with the um, the hardware that they are selling. Yeah, correct. They package it together. And uh, it's about Remnant nine. What's the price of uh, of uh, LTV? Is it Remnant B nine hundred or how much is it? 我们一年的会费是人民币四百八十八。so the uh, membership fee for one year is uh, RMB 480. 480. And that's packaged with the service and with, with the hardware. And, and you know, he, he, the consumer doesn't pay. So it's almost like it's free to the consumer. Just so, uh, 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 there are two models. One model is completely free. The first model is entirely free. 对。然后呢，我们跟硬件绑定的这一部分，我们采取的是付费模式。So together with the uh, hardware, this is a package price. So there's two different kind of price. One is uh, the uh, non-hardware, which is we so subscribe right. to separately. That's right. All right. In your case, I mean, you're a S word kind of a play primarily. Uh, you know, you ask consumers for a, what is the reaction of consumers? You launched recently in Singapore. What has the reaction been so far? Well, I, mean, I think we've been in market now for almost 18 months. Uh, we started our journey back in March uh, last year in the Philippines. Uh, and I think uh, it's safe to say that uh, Asian audiences are still getting used to this idea of paying for content online. So it's definitely been a challenge. And I think one of the things we've done over the past 18 months is pivot into this idea that someone has to pay 
right? Uh, so if it's not in consumers, then there are a number of other potential partnerships that pave the way for scaled premium subscriptions. Uh, telcos are clearly one of the strongest players in the space, uh, you know, and there's a strong affinity towards the products they sell, data packages, and content that essentially enrich the value of a data package. So I think there's a very strong and complementary relationship there. Uh, it's something we've done very effectively in all the markets we're in. Uh, we've played with device bundling deals. Uh, so there are deals like the deal with Chromecast in India. We're working on uh, other kinds of partnerships where uh, you buy a, a certain product, a device, a handphone, a tablet, et cetera, and you get access uh, to hook included, right? So I think uh, at this stage in the game, it's kind of hard to say when consumers will open up their wallets. And I think the situation's even further complicated because uh, there's a fairly significant gap in terms of the ability to pay online, right? This idea that online payments, uh, you know, I think the addressable base is less than 1% of the overall market. So I think given all the different factors, I think we are constantly looking for ways to find partnerships to extract uh, revenue from the ecosystem while maintaining a premium ad-free content experience, which really is all we care about in some ways. Right? So whereas he has a very comfortable position in Japan. You've got about 1.5 million subs. You, uh, you know, probably will uh, break even in another year and a half or so, and they're paying you 1,000 yen. So it's different markets. I mean, in his case, he's bundling it. In case he's looking for bundling partnerships because propensity to pay is not there in Japan, they're paying. Yeah, still the uh, <coughs> the uh, the telco companies, mobile companies like Docomo and SoftBank are working with the, uh, for example, Docomo has the uh, joint venture named DTB, which has uh, 5 million subscribers. And that number is huge because, you know, they're getting subscription at the st when they sell the smartphone. So that's way too powerful than ours, yeah. of course. No, let's say you don't have that partnership. What does that mean for your content deals? Coming to the question that he was asking, how much are you willing to pay for content? Are you looking for content from outside of Japan, or are you oh, looking yeah. at more domestic? You, you've yeah. uh, licensed yeah. a format we, from Germany to produce we, in Japan. We basically always try to balance the uh, international and domestic content. So, both in terms of the number of content and in terms of the consumption, roughly it's 50 and 50 between international and uh, domestic. And of that, most of the, in terms of the number, most of them are library, of course. And but we acquire some pr uh, U.S. drum series for premiere, and we also produce the uh, ten series a year, ori original series a year, about uh, ten hundred episodes a year. Yeah, and you also take on formats which you produce in Japan. The last cop is something which you licensed from Red Arrow recently. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to do something, and uh, so far there's only one case of remake based okay. on the uh, international format, but yeah. So to answer the question from the gentleman at the back, are you open to acquiring content since from this region, from here? Are you open and what prices? Yeah, uh, we are open. And uh, basically, uh, for now, I think it's fair to say, you know, we're quite focused on the US content uh, for international. Okay. Uh, we acquire UK and France, uh, Europe, but uh, mostly from US. And, but we, that said, we are uh, open to acquire content from anywhere on the planet, and uh, it should be easier, you know, for us both to work on the uh, uh, pay for the uh, consumption. So, what pricing ranges would it be? Let's say for a drama. Let's say, if, uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's uh, really. Give me a range. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not pinning you down. Give me a range. This is where you lowball. <laughs> give me, give me a range. Is it's, it is it is it six hundred dollars going up to? As much uh, as sixty thousand. Okay, 60, so it's from uh, <coughs> from it's let's say hundred ten thousand. Okay. To uh, million. To a million. So you got your answer there. Let's ask uh, Mr. Rajgopal also. What what pricing are you willing to pay? You no, know, I think it's it's. A <laughs> there's no easy way. There's no easy answer to that, right? We have over hundred and twenty studio partners, uh, all from all over Asia. Uh, we have uh, over 15 Hollywood studio partners. Uh, we have about 13 different kids' studios that we license from. And, you know, as, everything, as in everything else, I think there's a very wide range uh, of, of prices that is associated with content. 
uh, all the way from you know deep library content that we clearly don't pay a lot for, all the way up to exclusive. So what is Hollywood it not series. pay a lot for? How I'm much sorry? is it not pay a lot? Uh, you know, I think it really is. Un half, half. <laughs> you know, I think it's it's very hard to put a number, and I think uh, private conversations. I think most of you in the audience here probably know because you're probably in one side or the other of the deal. I think, uh, but but you know, I think the. Uh, it's, it's safe to say for OTT, without committing specific numbers, that the numbers tend to be lower than that for pay TV and free to air and other types of platforms, right? So one of the very first things we get as we talk to different studios uh, who we like to license from uh, is there's a fairly large gap between sort of existing commercial deals and models that they have with pay TV and free to air to when you shift to OTT where the addressable market appears to be much larger but the limitations in infrastructure and so forth give us actually a smaller reach, right? So, so I think the, so. it's a very interesting dynamic right now in terms of the potential of OTT versus the reach of OTT. And yeah, but you produced uh, a on the job, you produced the duck, That's right. the, the cricket show, yep. you've done that, so. No, I think so, so local productions is something which is, I, I can definitely comment on that. I think, uh, you know, local productions for us is all about elevating the conversation, right? For those of you sort of, uh, may not have heard, I think Hook is, uh, we embark on our very first original uh, television series for Made for S-Word original, so to speak. First in Asia, uh, it's in the Philippines. We found a phenomenal director, Eric Marty. Uh, he had a show that was uh, in the indie hit, a sleeper hit, uh, won a bunch of awards in the film festivals. And so we decided to take the TV, a movie, which is very popular, and, and basically convert it into a, sort of a franchise model for television, right? And when we went in with the goal for television, I think it was very simple. We just said, you know, we, ha we need to elevate the conversation, right? And we need SWOT and Hook as a brand to stand apart from everyone else. So we look at taking cinematic quality, much higher production than local productions on broadcast, a much edgier story. The treatment is much more cinematic. I think the post-production we spend a lot more on. And so we are essentially, because we're not going to be producing the same volumes as any of the local studios, the local broadcasters, right? We, we have the luxury of essentially creating a six hour long movie as opposed to you know hundreds of hours of TV to fill time slots, right? So I think we've pivoted away from all the traditional local production values, if you will. Uh, and as we look at OTJ, and I think we actually put out the teaser trailer uh, in the Philippine it on studios. The job. On it's the on the job, OTJ, yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah. The teaser's out so you can get a sense for what I'm talking about. But it is much closer to what you expect from a Hollywood TV series. So it's a co-production where uh, both of you can syndicate it or they're putting the money? So it is a co-production between uh, three parties. Yeah. Uh, Hook, uh, Globe Studios, which is a subsidiary of Globe Teleco, which is a Telecom, sure. uh, which is a large uh, mobile operator in the Philippines, and Reality, which is the production studio. So are you putting in more money than TV would put into this OTT production? Or oh, absolutely. So we're paying a lot more than uh, a local TV production. But you're willing to pay less for acquired content. I'm sorry? You're willing to pay less for acquired content. Yeah, because I mean, the, as a Hook original, there's a very different brand proposition for us, right? I think uh, it's, it's the equivalent of uh, any of the global players' uh, sort of original strategies, right? So we tend to invest a lot more in the local production because we own the IP. Unlike a licensed uh, scenario where we license the use of the IP for sure. finite periods of time. This is IP that we now co-own and can co-monetize over time across channels. So I think it's a different play. And clearly, uh, and, and, and as I said, there's also there's a huge brand requirement for us to uh, have it fit our brand image, which is that of a premium s player. player. Yeah, so I haven't asked Rebecca questions now. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. exactly. No, coming back now, it's for, for us to learn from you. You're more of a, you're a US player primarily with some yeah with some entry points in France, Germany, through Endemolshine. Are you looking at that as a play in Asia, coming into Asia through Endemolshine? Well, just you know, to explain a little bit about more how our brand works. So we are about creating premium content for a very specific audience, and we are audience first. And our audience cares about social media stars, and that's their celebrities. That's who, that's instead of Hollywood telling them who to care about, it's the people they're watching on YouTube and Snapchat and Vine. And, um, and so we harness that talent into our productions. We know, because we've been in the social video space for five years, which is many years in, in most of these people's a third of their lives, and we know who they care about. 
Um, and we use that talent, we put them into those productions. And then we use their platforms and their voices that are amplified across social media to market and promote them. So take a show that we did in the US called Freakish for Hulu. So Hulu, which obviously you know, every, is an SVOD, US only SVOD provider, they want to reach this audience. This is an influencer audience, these 12 to 24 year olds. And very soon they're going to have credit cards of their own. And so they need to connect to them in the household. And we're the biggest brand in the US to reach that audience. So we created a show. It has traditional um, Hollywood talent, but it has huge social media stars like Liza Koshy, um, who has 18 million worldwide followers. Um, and we use their platforms to get people to Hulu, to watch those shows, and to build awareness for it. So it's sort of a three-pronged strategy with creating great content, using our social platform. We have four and a half million subscribers. We have a billion views a year. And reach to those guys to drive them to various platforms. So I say all that to say we are now doing that outside the US. Half of our usage comes from outside the US. And some of our biggest territories are in Asia who are excited about the, the talent that we work with. So the answer is yes, we license and are looking to license both our US content there, but also to be really successful, connect with social talent that is local. Because for that piece of the leg to work, the marketing piece of the leg, yes, we have to use our big US talent, but we also have to use talent that teens in the various markets here care about and their celebrities. So all of those pieces need to work together. So yes, localizing our content and our presence is key for us, and we've done that so far in Europe. And is that coming to Asia? Um, we'd like it to. I, that's why I'm here. Right. So. In terms of your content creation production costs, how much would uh, the show you just talked about, how much money would you be willing to put? And you know, it's commissioned, right? Right. Well, so it, it, it ranges. Yes, it's a show like a show for Hulu um, was commissioned. We have a co-production deal. So we similarly, I'll give ranges like these acquisitions executives said. You know, we create 400 hours of content a year. Um, about a quarter of that is what we call premium content, so TV formats. And because of our model, because we're using this younger talent that is not, you're not getting through Hollywood agents and the traditional paths, and because we green light something and it's in production within a month, um, we've cut out a lot of the fat costs that sort of the Hollywood guys have embedded into their model. Um, so. A premium show for us will cost, can cost as much as half a million dollars, um, but you see it most, and that's you know so, certainly not Game of Thrones premium TV cost, but for digital studio, that's expensive US dollars. Um, but you see most of that on the screen, because it, it, it's, I mean, even a show like Freakish has special effects. Everything you're gonna see is on that screen. And it shrinks down to, could be $10,000 an effort, so for something we're producing um, just uh, for online. But it's all, all that money, and having come from a very traditional TV background, almost all of the dollars you're seeing is going into the creative. It's going into the screen. It's going into the talent behind the camera. And that's where the investments are made. Um, and, and we've sort of cut a lot of the fat out in the process. And for the ITV deal, is that also? So, on IT, so we have an output relationship with ITV and are launching, I should say, you know, Awesomest TV did something that some of the traditional cable networks um, including my former employer, Discovery, which is build the brand. Build a brand that it's over, you know, it's, it's larger than any one show, and the brand is what people react to, and they trust that. And that's what we did for the TV audience. Teen audience, we built that brand first. Um, and so a lot of markets we work with have recognized that. In the case of UK, ITV2 is going to launch a branded block around Awesome is TV, and they are taking the US content and then creating local content to put around that content with, like I said, local UK talent. Um, and we'll also be doing original series with ITV as well, um, using both US and the price and range is the same, or is it less, or is it more? It can, I mean, it, it, it's around that, that premium scripted price, yes. Um, that's where it's, that's Thank where you, and on to Mr. Hofang. In terms of LETV, a question which the audience, audience asks, what kind of investments you all put into shows? Are they the large costume dramas and you know, in the, in the modern dramas, what, what's the kind of money you put behind shows? Actually, in China, today, 
Oh, right now, right now in China, the uh, uh, drama and the um, reality TV shows in China now is in a very chaotic situation. Why do I say this? Actually, in China, in the film industry, the biggest production of these TV shows and the internet and mobile phones combined can buy a house in China. Uh, 中等城市里头买一栋大楼是没问题的。一部剧 ，That means、uh, the amount of money you spend on one、uh, one drama series, you can actually use that amount of money to purchase a huge house in、uh, China. It's building, not house. It's building a house. If you <laughs> you talk about drama. 因为顶级的剧，我们知道在中国的这个版权市场上，动不动就是十亿人民币以上一部一部一部剧啊，就是它的版权。All right. The rights to a、uh, show uh, can go up to ten,、uh, about one billion RMB. So, is, 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 is And also、uh, content acquisition. Put these two parts together, basically, I think every company in China, 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 Uh, yeah. and every year and every、um, a company, the investment is close to about four to five billion、uh, RMB. Uh, we can see that next year, that is, 2017, that many of the uh, streaming sites, that one company's plan, now not just one company, it's already going to cost 100 billion RMB. One company is going to cost 100 billion RMB next year. Next, next, next year, the forecast for uh, purchase, um, content acquisition and content production,、uh, the forecast is、uh, close to about 10 billion uh, RMB. That's for any TV.、Uh, no, I, 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 So now you know we've heard about content cost and what we people are willing to pay, how much are they willing to acquire, how much original. I mean, I'd like your feedback on what do you think about the Asian scene as far as、uh, SWOD, AWOD, and OTT is concerned. He's betting on SWOD.、Uh, you're betting on SWOD. Is there any scope?、Uh, op, you know, for you it's a secure future, but for some of the other players like Hook, View,、uh, you know, Iflex, some of the other other other, you know, their their future is not very clear. In India, Hotstar is looking at any award play. They've just just started a premium、uh, S award play. So, what is the future going forward? Your perspective on award?、Um, for Japan, I think you know we are moving toward the、uh, one-stop shopping for consumers. That's what consumers care about. So, we've inter already introduced the linear streaming, and、uh, we're thinking of introducing introducing the、uh, T-board and the ESD because to. <coughs> To acquire everything, you know, what consumer want is, you know, what they want to watch. They want want a one-stop shopping for what they want to watch. You're you're betting on this one, but no, are you、so、going to run out of money you know, at some stage? Are you going to run out of money? No, I, you know, I think、uh, everyone runs out of money at some stage. I think、uh, so. I think the、uh, you know, it's it's、uh, it's very easy, right? In some ways,、uh, there's some natural rights to play, right? The first thing is, I think. Multiple business models will coexist, right? I think there's no、uh, such thing as award versus award. I think it's really what content are you talking about? What content fits what niches, right? So I think I'm a strong believer, and and I think even developed markets where OTT has been prevalent for multiple years, I think have the same outcomes, right? You have award services and you have multiple award services, and I think content differentiation is what drives consumer preferences, right? So consumers pick. I mean, the stickiness to a specific brand. Is less than the stickiness to a specific piece of content. Yeah, but、right? piracy here in Asia is immense.、I'm、That's、sorry? a challenge. Piracy is immense in Asia. No, I think piracy is just a, you know it's overblown, right? I think in the sense that it is simply a statement of demand, right? I mean that's pretty much it, right? So I think there is nothing about the Asian audience that's anyway fundamentally different 
from you know, you know any other audiences anywhere in the world, right? And every other market, you've seen this evolution of the marketplace, whereas you have more legitimate options that are interesting, that are relevant, that have the right content, that hit the right price point, have the right product features, that etc. I mean, there's a whole laundry list. But if you get it right, I think piracy goes away by itself, right? I think the uh, the focus should be on solving for consumer problems, right? And providing differentiated content that is relevant to the audience, right? That's really all we should be focusing on, right? Uh, the whole piracy thing, I think, is just a red herring. It doesn't help at all, any way, shape or form, right? Yeah. What about in China? I mean, how's that shaping up? And in Hong Kong, and in other parts of where you're, where you're rolling out. Uh,坦白讲，我只能说是我们现在采用的是比较开放的这种态度。What they're um adopting now is a more open approach.呃，总体来说，我特别同意大家讲到的，就是我必须是以用户的这种他们的这个喜好为最高的原则。Generally, um, it has to be based. Uh, he thinks that it has to base mainly on the consumers' uh, thoughts on how to. Uh, um, 我为什么讲开放了？其实我们现在虽然每一家就是包括LET.com，包括包括我们在内的所有是秒针，其实全力都在做这种我们中文叫做自制，其实也就是所谓的original，original的这种这这种内容生产。但是这种内容生产它的这
It's got a specific consumer segment you're going after and stands out from the crowd, right? I think those are things we look for because that's those are the kinds of titles, brands, franchises that we'd like to attach ourselves to. Yeah. And from our awesomeness TV perspective, it's really knowing your audience, right? So we own our lane. We know our audience. We know what they care about. And we put stories on the screen that we know they want to watch. And then it's reaching them. So what's differentiated in the digital sort of media world is we are really, we, we know who our audience is. Unlike putting stuff on linear TV and hoping people come and actually not knowing who's watching it, our client isn't the distributor, our client is the audience. And our ability to know who's watching and know what they care about and getting their feedback, being on online platforms and interactive platforms, we know how to both create the content but actually get it to them and react to what they care about. Yep. Mr. Hongfeng. Uh,基于刚才所说的这种开放的策略，我们希望跟在座所有的同行啊，一起来呃，共同打造更多的、更好的内容，在这个至少在中国市场上，我们有更好的这种合作机会吧。As uh, what he mentioned earlier, the um, open mindset, uh, he would like to um, in future. We'd like to have participation with uh, all of uh, you who are here and to um, to uh, make this uh, his uh, this uh, China's uh, channel a better one in the future. How do they get in touch with him? How do they get in touch with him? How do they get in touch with him? Um, uh, if you want to get in touch, uh, yeah. his contact details are inside yes. the... This Please. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> A big round of applause to the panel. Thank you very much. You've been very, very good. And thank you for being a good audience. Thank you.